You know that feeling you get? <laughs> that feeling you get right after you've had sex with the woman? <laughs> so do I. <laughs> My name is Stephen Ryan and I'm a public speaking addict. It's been three performances since my last laugh. <laughs> I first recognized my crippling addiction when my support group, Narcissists Anonymous, were looking for a motivational speaker. And I thought, I'd be brilliant at that. <laughs> Narcissists Anonymous, they're a hard group to manage. Recently, after much negotiation, we all agreed to be joint president. <laughs> But only some of us can make the executive decisions. For instance, the publication of our annual periodical, The Who's Who of Narcissists Anonymous, was my idea. <laughs> Bit about myself, I, I suffer terribly from arachnophobia. It's not so much that I'm afraid of spiders. I just don't want to see them and be allowed to get married and be happy. <laughs> I used to be considerably younger than I am now. <laughs> but I grew out of it. 9-11 changed everything. <laughs> in fact, I used to be the youngest person in the world, which out of a population of six billion people is no mean feat. But no matter how many solicitor's letters I send to the people at the Guinness Book of Records, they're not willing to recognize it as a record. <laughs> It's the angriest exchange of letters I've had since I've been duped into going to see a play called The Vagina Monologues because of its misleading title. I was a gorgeous child. Fuck it, lads, I was lovely. And what's more, I knew it. I could have had any BBC presenter I want. And I'm not just talking about Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Jimmy Savile made unrequited love to the worldless mother. No, I could have had one of those hard to get BBC presenters, like Noel Edmonds. <laughs> but you didn't come here this evening to listen to me talk about the imagined seduction of 1980s bearded BBC presenters by an infant. <laughs> Or at least if you did, this is one of those rare occasions where you can go home satisfied. There was a woman who used to mind us back then. Mother, we used to call her. And she used to count the magpies. That's one for sorrow, two for joy, three to get married, four to die. Five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. Now I was driving around last year, it was, it was actually, it was early in the morning, the ground was still wet from the dew. My neighbour Rabbi Goldman keeps pissing in my lawn. <laughs> and I was driving around, and I happened to spot three magpies, that's one for sorrow, two for joy, three to get married. I thought I'd best keep on going, and looked for six magpies in order to fund the wedding. <laughs> when I saw the six magpies, I thought, since I'm guaranteed a wife, I might as well keep going and look for two magpies in order to favorably augment the size of her breasts. <laughs> as well as being someone who's superstitious, I'm also someone who believes you make your own luck. And it's for that reason that I've started setting animal traps in order to catch the magpies. <laughs> As well as being someone who believes you make your own luck, I'm also optimistic. Should they peck each other to death in the traps, I may count the dead ones, or I may discount them, <laughs> in order to get gold every time. <laughs> I was watching a program the other day on dead magpies. I wasn't, it's just hard to get a segue to move off of talking about dead magpies. <laughs> I was in town the last day, and the uh, Cancer Society were raising money for, well, against cancer. And they were pinning daffodils onto people's lapels. Now I suffer terribly from hay fever. 
In fact, I'm president of the Hay Fever Society of Ireland. So I suggest to the Hay Fever Society of Ireland that we should get little tumours and put them on top of pins and pin them to people's lapels. That's a joke, by the way. Yeah, people don't like me harvesting their melanomas for ironic fundraising. I am a very charitable person, though. Last year I tried to raise 3,500 euros to go out and help the poor people of Haiti rebuild. But people aren't as generous as me. They didn't give enough money. They only gave me 3,000 euros, which was only enough for my flights to the Bahamas <laughs> and my two weeks accommodation there. There's a woman in my town, and her name is Esther. And all the kids call her Esther the Molester because she molests them. <laughs> if you're going to molest children, Esther is a fantastic name to have. <laughs> because if your name rhymes with molester, no one's ever going to believe the children. <laughs> Folks, if you enjoyed my stand-up comedy, there's plenty more available at www.google.com. <laughs> now, I recognize my style is a lot like Marmite, in that it's delicious. <laughs> so you should have all enjoyed that. Thank you very much, folks.